first. And you know, when you are a musician, you know how to play on that instrument. And you have got the notes. And you know how to read those notes. And you know how to turn those notes into music. Amen. You see? Praise God. Come on. I cannot do that. <laughs> because I, I don't understand notes. So when you have your instrument, and when you have the notes, then you can play right away. No, not if you are part of an orchestra. Because in an orchestra, everything must be in order. So actually, all the musicians, they can do nothing until one special man yes. entered the scene. Yes. And that's the man with the little stick. <laughs> <laughs> and with that little stick, he can move every instrument yes. in that orchestra. Yes. No matter how big it is, or how small it is, and he has full control. Mm -hmm. And I saw there in Cartagena all those young musicians, how they put their attention yeah. to the conductor. Yeah. And they were waiting for a sign from him. Yeah. And after they got that sign, they didn't start playing. But when he gave that little sign, the music started and filled the whole, the whole ear. And it was so beautiful, you see. But suddenly, the conductor with that little stick, he did like this, and the whole orchestra stopped. And then he did like this, and the little stops. Amen. Yes. Amen. And Brother Brennan, he, he says somewhere in, uh, I think it's in the sermon, Shalom. He speaks about hard things in his life. When he lost his wife, lost his baby and he was crying. Why? Why did it happen? He couldn't understand. And I he said I I didn't know why it happened that way. But now I know. Because now I see that this is God's because God, He works on you and me to make you and me to, to bring to bring the right kind of sound. You see, because when God is using you and me, He needs small instruments and He needs big instruments. And he used them for different purposes. Because maybe you are you are a big instrument. And God wants to use you to, to talk to somebody. <coughs> and you are very bold. <coughs> and God, he needs exactly that kind of sound. But if you use your bold sound, to speak to a little weak person, you can actually make a lot of damage. That's the way God, he also needs some small foods that can play very subtle. Amen. Because some people, some
some brothers and sisters, you may treat them very boldly. Other ones, you may treat very selfishly. And when we are an instrument in God's symphony, we must put attention to the man with the stick. Who is the leader? Who is the conductor? Why, why does an orchestra actually need a conductor? But the random says because he knows the rhythm. He knows the tempo. Sometimes we need to go too fast. Or it happens quite often that we go too slow. You see? Or we are getting too high or too low. So we need to put attention to that conductor. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Who is instructing you and me how to act. And then we come into a great harmony where we can play this wonderful end time symphony and see how the word is getting manifested in our life. Christ, he was the word. And now we become the word. Is that wonderful? The manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I just want to encourage you to think of this, that God's law must come to pass. Amen. The law of life. And when you have that law, when you have that seed in your life, you must be resurrected. Yeah. You must be restored. Hallelujah. You must come back to your original condition. Yes. No one can stop it. Amen? Amen. So, uh, as a brother told me yesterday, he said, just keep on pressing. Because it's, it's very soon over. Very soon it's over. Very soon, we are making that step from this mortal body into the incorruptible. Because there is a law. And if you feel it's dark, it's cold, and it's too much frost, ice, and snow, think of this. Every year, there is a spring.
actually, <clears throat> as I said, we have to find ourselves in the scripture. We have to recognize ourselves. Yes. Yeah, to understand who we are. And uh, <clears throat> well, I was uh, I was born uh, I was born in 1962. My parents they were Lutherans. Um, and they become Pentecostals, and uh, I was uh, first. I was sprinkled by the priest, and I was uh, baptized in three titles, and then I was later on baptized in in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, <clears throat> well, I was on my journey as a believer, and I enjoyed the word, and. Uh, it happened that I came to a very difficult part, a very difficult time in my life. And I, I saw in the scripture that it's supposed to be a bride. And that bride is supposed to be raptured. And I understood that we are, we must live in that time, that hour, where this great end may take place. But I was wondering, when there is a bride, it must also be a certain message for that bride. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't find that message, because uh, everyone can read the Bible, you find the Bible all over the world, and uh, Catholics reading the Bible, and Lutherans, and Pentecostals, and uh, non-believers even read the Bible, and, and a lot of them think the Bible is a really good book. So I thought it must be a certain message hidden somewhere. But how can I find that message? I was struggling with and um, I was crying unto the Lord, have you forgotten your feet on earth today? Where are you? You see, I have a great question. I need an answer. But there was no answer. I was struggling for years. One day it happened that somebody knocked at my door. And it was a neighbor. <laughs> and he came with some message books. And he said to me, I don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> but I know you are struggling with many things. <laughs> <laughs> So I was so excited about that. Amen. I took those books. I ran straight up to my room, turned on the light, and started reading. But after some few minutes, I was very discouraged because I didn't understand it. It was like uh, reading Chinese. <laughs> I couldn't catch anything from it. So, I saw on the front page William Warren Branham. I have already heard that he was a false prophet. False doctrines went wrong way. God had to take his life. So, I made my decision there, this is not for me. <laughs> Finished. I was in the message for maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> and then I continued searching. Where can I find the truth? God, why don't you answer? You see, 
I am desperate. I had my wife and four children and I was worried about so many things. So um, one day my wife and I, we went up in a little cabin in the southern part of Norway. It was just a very simple old cabin. And um, actually, it, uh, it was a very boring day for me. Usually, I enjoy nature and going out and staying in cabins and things. But this day, I, I just felt bad. So we were just sitting there. Nothing special to talk about. And uh, I felt so bored. And then I, I turned around, and behind me there was a bookshelf. So I just picked that book and looked at the book. He never married me. <laughs> God, he saw all things from eternity. 
And when I came to that cabin, he was waiting for me. Amen. I never come to this message. The message came to me. Amen. Nobody can take it away from you. Amen. Hallelujah. And we need that personal experience. Amen. Because we are getting tested, you see. So, God was showing up in simplicity, revealing himself in simplicity. And by that, I can see how great he is. Amen. So may God richly bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen.